Hello, this is Hawk to Bean, and today we are going to continue SCP-6500. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get right to it. Kaiju removed the youth's charm from his Shakujo, wondering why the Ofuda seemed less potent than in years past. He leaned on the Shakujo as he turned toward Fumiko, who had her brought back to the wall. Left hand covering a place where her, where the spear ha up had struck. Are you alright, Tanaka-san? He asked in English. I don't think anything's broken. What do you know about this fading of magic the bird spoke of? She has a moment then shook her head. Nothing. Like you said, my, my Japanese isn't the best. I wasn't catching all of that. Kaito stared at her, but he did not look away. She met his eyes without hesitation. You don't know anything about magic fading? Just now and at the temple. My charms were not as effective as they once were. A few strikes and then they are just paper. Charms? I assume the staff... What? No, my shakujo is merely steel. It's traditional for traveling monks. The charms are wrapped around the staff are what hurts a yokai. And a kotodama. Those words you say like a spell? They are not a spell. They are gifts from the... the, the but of as... Uh, Atvas and Arhats. Empowering the knowing with certain abilities. They are tools, not, not spells. Fumigo shook her, her head. Seems like a spell to me. Kaito snorted back a sh short, sharp laugh. Uh, so, the staff doesn't do anything? The way you swing it around, it sure seems potent. It hurts when I hit someone. I don't know what that... Would you like a demonstration? Fumiko laughed uncomfortably. <laughs> Message received. Dropping it. Kaito sighed. There are very few legends concerning a, a Shakujo having powers. Like what? Many years ago, I read it about a famous monk who was visiting in Koji, in Ko Koji Prefecture. The monk uses Shakujo to split the earth and reveal a spot for a well to be dug, as the nearby village was suffering terribly from drought. It's still the air and is called the Eye Cleansing Well by the locals. Neat story. Not terribly helpful in this situation. She smiled at him. Kaito laughed, causing his head to ring from the impact Act against the asphalt. What of the man the Tengu man mentioned? And do you know him? He asked. I thought I caught a name. Omoguchi, right? Yes, and Yokai used uh, the Sama honorifics, so he must be someone of importance. I'll call it in. Are you alright? Kudos swirled some water from his bottle, rinsing out the blood and spitting it in on, into a nearby shrub. I will be fine. Fumiko turned from him and placed a finger on her ear as she started to talk on the radio. Kaito turned and looked at, at the covered body of the young uh, Chi-Chi. He tried to tune out the sound of her discussion with her superiors while he cleared his mind and struggled to accept the responsibility. No idea of this death. He was still staring at it when she tapped him on his shoulder. There's a man in Kyoto named Kenta Omoguchi. Why do you think this at uh, this? Why do you think, think that is the man the Tengu spoke of? It's not a common last name, and this Omoguchi is the CEO of, a, of Transstar Energies. The headquarters are in the city. Kaito rubbed at his aching skull. Well then, let's speak with Omoguchi-san. Kyoto! 
yeah, I'm not uh, gonna do a five minute video when we're halfway when we're only halfway through the e e cleric story. I'm sorry. We're gonna make it a little bit longer. Kaito sat in the backseat of an armored SUV with tinted glass, watching as the vehicle crested a hill and the city of Kyoto came into view. He gripped the Shikujo in both hands. A man was calling the yokai and oni into the material realm, and Kaito did not know what to make of this information. What would they face is with this this man? Fumiko sat in the front passenger seat, talking into her phone in quiet tones as a silent uniformed driver operated the vehicle. Kaito tapped her shoulder as she hung up, and she turned to look back at him. What are we doing? he asked. A forward operating team has secured the building and evacuated everyone but Miss Omoguchi under the cover story of a security breach connected to the terrorist attack back in Ine. He's being delayed by some agents so we can speak with him. Bit heavy handed, isn't it? Yeah, it's not as subtle as I would usually like, but it wasn't my decision. The situation needs to be contained as fast as possible. If someone is connected to the rising incident, and some yokai, then we need them to stop. Hmm. From what? Uh... So there have been more instances than usual, he asked. From what we can say, yes. You're normally fairly active from what we're, you've noticed, but when was the last time you need to deal with three yokai? I killing people within the same day. He rubbed his closed eyes. He said, so aching from the head, he took an Ine. Never. They are usually solitary, spread out, hidden. Right, so if this is a rising tides situation, there's a significant threat to normalcy. Kaito Scott. <laughs> normalcy. These things have existed since before Japan had people living in her borders. What is normal? You fools are always trying to impose your unlimited views on what the natural world consists of. This is real. She shifted in the seat, avoiding his eyes, and turned face forward. I know your opinion and I empathize. But the point is, the situation is dangerous for you and I to handle all alone. How many dead now from just us from these two events? Eight? That's too much. People are going to start wondering. Imagine the panic. He nodded up semi before realizing she was no longer looking at him. Okay, I agree. The panic would be devastating. Perhaps it's time to start informing people of the world they live in. Fumiko shrugged. Above my pay grade, Ikuchi. I get you sound. He watched out his window as the city grew around them. Ancient temples and modern businesses intermixed in a way only Kyoto appeared. How fitting to face a man of business here amongst the old city. As if if he were communing with the Oni, he then aware better. The past and present were intertwined into the very bones of the old capital. The Tengu said something before you banished it, Fumika said. It said many things, Tanaka-san. Right, but... Something I caught was that he called people Kegare. And that's not a word I know. Its literal meaning is defilement or uncleanliness. But in Shinto, it has another. Which is... Spiritual corruption. Stagnancy. Reading of disease on the level of the soul that this is not a moral corruption, not referring to sin or the standing of one's spirit from one's action. This is a natural reaction to amoral, unnatural forces. So one must seek forgiveness for one's wrongdoing and yet still have cur one might yet still have cur agare. They would still be stained by the action. Do you understand? Not in the context of the in whole human race, as the burden implied. Kagari needs to be remedied by the people responsible, repair for, for, through purification rituals. 
A common allegory used in Shinto is that a still pool can become stagnant, a source of infection or a breeding ground for plague-bearing insects. But running water is clear, it is pure. The Tengu was calling human society a stagnant pool. But we're always moving forward, so that doesn't make sense. Fumiko sat silently for a moment, and he could not gauge her mood with her facing away. Suddenly she spoke again. What does purification of an entire society look like? In the Tengu's mind, a tsunami would probably be appropriate. Look, gas is as escaped the agent's mouth before she sampled it. She turned and looked into his eyes. Could a yokai be capable of such a thing? Literally, I very much doubt it. The seas are more powerful than any one yokai. Actually, I'm not so sure. Oh, sorry, I'm interrupting. But metaphorically, a wiping with the slate? Possible. There are many realms beyond on this one, and they are filled with many yokai. <sighs> it was quite. Fumiko was quiet again, eyes cast downward, and then and she said, Genocide? It was Kaito's turn to shrug. Both the Ioni on Mount Ibuki and the Tengu mentioned the realms were, are, were fading, because they claimed the magic was faltering. I don't know what they meant, but if all the yokai and Oni were to find themselves without homes, they needed somewhere anew. There is not much room in Japan, as it stands. Fumiko shuddered. I agree. It is not a pleasant thought. And you claim not to know anything about this fading of magic, Jailer. He thought to himself. The driver spoke for, for the first time. We're approaching the address. Any word from your former team? Fumiko asked. Negative. They reported the building was evacuated and going to security of a person of interest. But no further or updates have been transmitted. What? That's not good. What does it mean, Fumiko? Kaito asked. She turned back towards him, her eyes a little wide at his use of her given name. Trouble. A few minutes later, they stood in front of the 10 story office building. It's clear in that last store is showing a pristine lobby cleared of all people. There were no signs of Foundation activity. That's right. We haven't heard anything since they secured the building. Fumiko said into her cell phone. No, I think we need a full tactical team here now. We'll let the task force and get into our position. Thank you, Director. As she hung up the phone, Kaito looked at her. She made eye contact and looked up apologetic. We're going to need to wait for reinforcements. No. I need I'm going to talk with this man and now. He saw her towards the glass doors, but she ran and stepped into his way with her arms outstretched as a barrier. We need to wait. We don't know what's happening in there. I will not enter that building behind a squad of your professional soldiers, Fumiko. I'm going in now. He pushed her to the side, gently but firmly, and started walking up the stairs to the glass doors. God damn it. Fumiko turned to the driver, still seated. Stay here and update the team when they arrive. I'm turning on my transparent so they should be able to see exactly where we are. Those aren't our orders, he shouted at her back as she turned to follow Kaito into the building. Looks like we're almost at the end. Kaito looked about the empty lobby. A pristine, polished floor and abandoned security station faced him. He approached the security station and looked at the computer monitor, which was still logged in and open for use. You evacuated the entire building, he asked over his shoulder as Fumiko entered the lobby. Yes, or that's what I was told. The station hasn't been banned for long, and there's no one milling about outside.
She shrugged as she came up beside him. That was 25 minutes ago, so I get, uh, so I assume whoever er, er, was left has gone home. It's after 2100, and not many people would still be around, I think. He turned and looked around the lobby once more, then met her eyes. Where is your team? Their transponders are all in the executive suite, top floor. Kaido picked up a security badge that was laying on the security station's desk. He walked to the elevators and held the door for her. Back up is another 15 minutes out, she said as she followed into the open elevator. We won't be waiting for them. He said as he pressed the security badge against the center and keyed the top floor. What's your plan here, Kaito? Talk with the man. Find out his connection to the Yoni. Find your team. You make it sound very simple. He smiled sadly. Everything is simple if you look at it the right way. She shook her head and checked her rifle. Not in my experience. Let go of your fear. This is the illusion. All things must end eventually. Well, I'd rather we not end tonight. He nodded as the elevator doors opened on the top floor. Fumiko entered first, clearing the room with her rifle raised. Kaito followed but stopped to look above them. The ceiling was over 15 meters tall, and a large torii gate stood in the center of the room. The corridor beyond led to many other rooms, but they entered the ex uh, executive suite when needed to pass the you need to toll Ori. He walked to the reddish orange stone arch and placed his hand upon it, still looking upwards. What's wrong? Fumiko asked. This is an actual Tori, not a decoration. It's very old and well taken care of, but it's strange to see one in this setting. Huh, great. You don't see those indoors a lot. I can't think of any. An example of one being moved into a building such as this. In Shinto, they serve a function in the open air, severing the mundane from the sacred. I do not I think much on the concept of hearsay, but I think this may be close. The Buddha would not have found corporate executives to be sacred. Why would a corporation be considered sacred? They're evil. Have you seen Disney? Unlikely. He walked further into the large room, realizing this was another lobby. The receptionist's desk stood a few paces from the Tory, guarding the way to the inner offices of the of CFOs and CEOs. It too was empty. The clang of a shakujo rings echoed in the empty hall as he walked further in. There was no sign of the jailer team. Where are your men? A few dozen meters down this corridor. They continued on until they reached double doors with a name placard that read Omoguchi Kenta, CEO, and formal Japanese characters. He pushed one of the doors inward and gas. <sighs> Fumiko rushed in beside him and shouted, Fuck! Already before them was the five member team, eviscerated and bludgeoned into an Ooh, almost unrecognizable shapes. Several had their heads torn off. The smell of blood and fecal matter was strong in the large executive office. Kaito's vision swam as he panned across the bodies until movement at the end of the room caught his eye. A middle-aged Japanese man in an expensive suit walked out from a personal bathroom, wiping his hands with a towel. Kaito noted the white towel had been streaked red. What is this? Kaito said in Japanese. You come into my building without authorization and then have the gall to ask me that, the man said in English. Corporate spies, no doubt, or terrorists. He walked to his death and threw a bloody hand towel into a small trash can. Then walked in to stand in front of his desk, leaning on slightly. You are Kenta Omoguchi? Fumiko asked. Actually, fuck that. What did you do to these men? They came in, waving about those guns. I was afraid for my life. The man smiled. So you killed them and with your bare hands? Yes, they did not show me proper respect, priest. Fumiko pointed her rifle at Oguchi. You son of a bitch! 
Kyle touched her shoulder and whispered, No, we need to know what happened here. I am a king. I do not answer to vagabond priests or part of our military agents of shadowy organizations. Kaito started to ask what the man meant, but was distracted by the sound of the suit ripping at the seams. His flesh grew, tearing through the fabric and in his pale skin, revealing a horrid Oni warrior two and a half meters tall. The shed skin slapped against the tiled floor messily, spilling blood in a pool around him. The Oni had bright blue skin, three horns protruding from his, his brow and a mouth full of tusks. His eyes shone red in the dimly lit office. He wore a coat of oily green scales, like armor over his rough flesh. Kaito looked around and saw the light fleeing from the room, a mist rising from the floor and occluding the dead agents. The air grew colder as well. El. The only reached his left and pulled a large, large nugget Ita from the shimmering air. Who are you to invade my domain? And the man answers, Hurusha. Kaito's grip. Kaito gripped his Akuto and placed a Fudo on the head of the staff. What is your name, demon? Shoot and Doji. Kaito's mouth opened wide, lost for a moment. What? Fumiko demanded. Your priest has heard of me, the Oni cried, then filling the room with booming laughter. What can I say? I always liked sake. Fumiko almost asked that question, but was thrown backwards as a noggin. As blade slammed into the floor in front of her. A shockwave rippled from the impact, but Kaito's Shakujo deflected the force. A belch I mean, as the Afuda took effect. No more questions, cried the Oni as it lunged in this direction. As the Naga Anita's blade swung for Kaido, he uttered a cut of Otodama and leapt to his right. The blade bounced off the force of his word and deflected away into the floor again, crushing tile and causing the chips to bombard Kaido's body. He felt the burning slashes across his cheek and arms, noting there would be blood. He swung his Shakujo down and hit the Oni's forearms with the head of a thud. The Oni growled and reached for him. The large hand wrapped around Kaido's outstretched palm with a brilliant flash of light erupted from the Oni's clenched fist. Loop blood splashed across Kaido's chest as Tendoji gasped and pulled his maimed hand away. Three fingers had been crushed by a blast and a cut was rent into the large blue, blue palm. Kaito threw down the ruin of Fuda. Stained with Oni blood, the demon dropped the war spear and clutched his hand to his chest. You fucking mouse! How dare you strike me! Kaito rushed in and plunged his Akujo into the broken tile in front of the giant. The staff spaced and uncleaned into the floor, and the Afuda at the top shined brightly. Triggering a cacophony of chiming bells, the Afuda flashed white light and the Oni clutched his eyes with his good hand, gasping a jerk. A curse in Japanese. Kaito ended and placed two Uofuda on the shimmering scum alarmer. White light erupted and formed a series of chains that wrapped themselves around the Oni, tying him to the floor. The Oni gurgled as one of the chains wrapped around his thick neck. Kaito pulled a staff from the floor, causing the use of Fuda to crumble from its tip. He turned and looked down at Umiko, who was struggling to get up from where the blast had thrown her against far wall. The drywall was cracked above her, or where she had impacted it. He crashed down next to her. Are you hurt? Umiko groaned and reached for him. He followed to her feet. My head's ringing, but I don't think anything's broken. He took... He looked over her shoulder at the crater she'd left in the drywall. She followed his gaze in gasps and, and started running her hands over her body. Jesus, am I bleeding? It does not appear so. 
The Yamachichi? He nodded and turned to look at the struggling Oni. The chain shone brighter as he tried to flex his way free, wrapping tighter around him. Kyle stood in front of the Oni King. What are you doing here? I had heard you were dead. Humans and their stories! Bah! Who is he? Fumiko asked. Self proclaimed King of the Oni, who once caused many deaths in this, in this area. Legend had it that his head had been severed from his body by a famous samurai. And so it was, priest. But I still lived. My magic is strong. Why the, mas ma why the masquerade? Why pretend to be a human? Power. Isn't always about power? I needed resources and influence to guide my fellow yokai back to the waking world. <sighs> Tell me about the realms fading. Why do you seek refuge here? Ask your colleague. Kaito looked at Fumiko, who was shaking her head. She knows. They all do. They've been trying to round us up for months. They know why we're here. Magic fades, priest. What would you have us do? Is he speaking the truth? Have you been hunting in yokai? Kaito asked Fumiko. Of course, that's what we do. We contain the anomalous. But then that begs the question, priest. Why do they need you? Kaito said at Fumiko, I already told you, we couldn't find what was killing the people in Ine. We need people with more ex expertise. Yoni started laughing again, the sound reverberating off the walls. <laughs> they didn't need you, they needed that. Yoni was directing, was looking directly at Kaito's Shakujo. What? Fumiko looked from Yoni to him and then raised her rifle to point at the e demon. Kaito grabbed the rifle and pulled the barrel up towards the ceiling. No, tell me what he need what he means. We're gonna get the rifle away from him and turn away. I don't know what he's talking about. Stop lying, Fumiko, Kaito said softly. She turned towards him quickly, anger clear on her face. I Suddenly she touched her ear and spoke softly enough he couldn't understand her. All right, thank you, sir, she said to whoever was on the other end. What is it? Kaito demanded. We did want your help, that's true. But we also want the staff. Why? It's a memento for my family. It's just a, it's just a shakujo. You could buy one fairly easily. Not like that when we couldn't. She rubbed her temples out from pain or frustration. Or both, she sighed. It's a relic, an anomaly. We came across some documentation in archives that implied it was magic. The capital with the capital M. What nonsense is this? You have to know, it's much more than a staff. It's a key. To what? To the realms, to dimensions, to endless thaumaturgical energy. It's a lightning rod for the divine. It's... Filling Akiva radiation like we've never seen. What does any of that mean? It's the reason you banished the yokai so easily. Not your charms, not your spells. Oh, Kotodama. It's a staff. No. Have you ever met another Oni hunter that was as, effect that was as effective as you? Did you think you were just stronger than anyone else? You can banish a spirit with ease that would take a squadron of soldiers and thaumaturgies to take down. Look at what you did to him! They only laughed again, but not as loudly. It's true, Pete Reese. You're nothing special. It's a rod that's doing the hard work. Don't listen to this murderer. Listen to me, Fumiko cried. Kaito stared at the his staff, gripped loosely in his hands. 
He's right. Magic is failing. The anomalous is falling apart. Things we've known about for centuries are just ceasing to exist. And some of them are causing a fair amount of chaos in their way, she said, gripping his shoulders. But what isn't failing, Kaido? You. That's Seth. You've been fighting off demons for decades, and you've always succeeded. The staff is why. No, he whispered, his arms starting ready to shake. Yes, but it doesn't take away from anything you've done. You've served your people a well. And now, he asked, pushing her hands off his shoulders and turning away from both woman and Oni. We can do something about this entropy, and that staff could be the linchpin. Come with us. Help us. The Oni started laughing loudly again. He doesn't work for Jelly, his little agent. Just look at him. You expect him to change now? He's cracking under this new world he's discovered. The Oni growled and the room grew even darker. Kaito looked around frantically. The walls of the, of the office were gone, replaced with red-hued mist and dying trees. Look around you, priests! The realms die, and we will take their, our place in the waking world! Kaito turned, sword the, turned towards the Oni King just in time to see the iron change and it's dim and then split with a crack like a gunshot. The spirit chains fell towards the ground, flickered, and then dissipated. Shooting Doji, backhand Fumiko into the mist and screaming at him. I will take your toy, eat your flesh, and my people will cover these islands like a flood. We will take better care of them than any human would, once they're all dead. The only roared and mist and shrouded them both. Kaiser kind of looked back towards where the e floor lobby had been, where a Tory gate shone a dull red. The only had pulled them into this realm. The Tori had been a boundary, not of the sacred, but of the otherworldly. Out of the mist, the Nag Anita's blade thrust in Orkaido's chest. He stepped backwards, swung the Shakuchi in a tight arc, deflecting the blade. A bell chimed dimly in the distance. He, sw he leapt up as the blade Ada swung for his feet, and in mid air struck the thick shaft of the spear, stepping in two. Another bell chimed, louder and closer this time. Shooting OG roared. Just fucking die already! Kaito plunged into the mist. As he did so, he recited a poem quietly in Japanese. The flying river or waters bring all things to the sea. I too must go. The mist parted and the only snarled over its large bloody e e tusks. It reached for him with his hands, one whole and one horribly maimed. Kaito twisted as he ran, slipping between the two monstrous hands, and struck the wet ground on the Oni on with the Ishakujo. A bell peeled all around them, and a white light engulfed the Oni as blue white flames left across the ground and up his, his legs. The Oni reared back, screaming and frantically batting at the flames. Kaito swung his staff and struck Utendoji in the face. Blue black egg ikers flashed across Kaido's body and face, blinding him. The Oni King screamed in pain and lashed out desperately, striking Kaito in the chest and sending him crashing to the cold earth. When he, he could open his eyes a little, he saw a light, light returning to his face, the walls of the office melting back into place, and half caved in head of shooting Doji staring at him. Shuddering breaths came from the ruined Oni King's throat as he struggled to speak. Suddenly, the only fixated on his face with his one good eye and groaned. I will not fade. Shooting Doji's chest was, was racked with violent coughing, causing more of the blue acre to split over from his lips. He managed a wet, weak sigh and fell silent. The beast's chest stopped rising and the light dimmed in his eye as it grew bright in the room. Kaito looked away.
Kaito gripped a shakujo across his chest, laying, lying flat on his back. A sharp pain stabbed in his side with each breath, and he tasted blood. He struggled to crane his neck so that he might and look at the staff. Well, look at me now. Couldn't you have told me about your power before now? I could have used the help. Some rushed over to him. He barely he recognized Fumiko in his fugue. The world went black as he closed his eyes. Item number SCP 6500A Staff. Object class Safe. Special same procedures. SCP 6500A Staff is to be kept within in the personal reach of person of interest 8888. The person of interest is to be kept comfortable and low security e personnel ac accommodation at site redacted. So long as he continues to work with the SCP 6500 research and containment in the team. Person of interest as as 8888 is to be afforded as personal security whenever he is off site. High end security protocols are to be in place while he is on site. Description The staff is the designation for a Shakujo, traditional staff of Buddhist monk across many cultures, constructed of bronze and steel with eight steel rings hanging from a circlet at the top. When activated, the staff has the ability to open doorways to other space time constructs or dimensions. Additionally, the object can be utilized to move one object or living organism from one space-time construct to another. Certain additional effects have been recorded by Foundation for Snow, including radiation of heat and light, creating significant damage upon impact on anomalous beings known as Oni or Yokai. It's currently unclear if the damage could, if the object could damage other anomalous beings or objects in the same manner. Further testing has been proposed using various other SCP objects. An anomalously a high resistance to damage to its structure and the ring of a bell upon the activation of the object. No mechanism of 40 production of such a sound has been found within the object's structure. Documents found within Thomas article archives have led researchers to theorize that the staff is key to into an immeasurable energy source similar to and make up to Akiva radiation. Indeed, the object emits low yields of Akiva radiation. Asian, even in its inactive state. Discovery. Concerned over the impeding event designated as SCP-6500, Overwatch Command commissioned a research project into possible methods for neutralization. Examination of O50's personal o archives left behind upon their separation from the Foundation. Uncovered mentions of a staff with extra-dimensional effects and an endless supply of thaumaturgical energy. Further notes from O50 led researchers to believe to key in on a 45-year-old Japanese monk with loose connections to group interest Alpha-19, Serpent's Hand. Surveillance by Agent Fumiko Tanaka confirmed that the monk Kaito Uguchi, hereby designated a person of interest 8888 or 8888, possessed a shakujo that appeared to exhibit anomalous capabilities. It was decided to approach a person of interest, 8888. Under the a cover story of Agent Antonica requiring existence with a rash of killings believed to be perpetrated by, anomalous, by an anomalous entity. By pursuing this investigation, both the agent and person of interest were injured and re required medical care. Person of interest, 8888, was treated for several broken ribs, substantial deep confusions, a punctured lung, and a severe concussion. Kaiser had proved the expressive year. I regret to said to work with the Foundation, however, during his recuperation, Agent Tanaka was able to convince Kaito to assist in the neutralization of SCP-6500. Kaito's sole condition and for assistance was that the object never leave his possession and he would operate it under observation for any research or attempts to utilize its anomalous its nature. The O5 Council agreed to these conditions so long as he cooperated. Agent Tonka was signed as part of Kaito's security detail and a personnel a, a liaison. Addendum. Proposed research and utilization of object. Senior researcher redacted proposed to use 
this staff to identify the source of atrophy caused by SCP-6500, given its abilities to manip manipulate its space-time constructs. This is based on the theory that the source of SCP-6500 is extra-dimensional, which has not been confirmed. Additionally, researcher Redacted proposed to utilize the object as a conduit for its anomalous energy to feed into the source of the degrading entropy of SCP-6500, thereby diverting the further degradation of baseline reality's anomalous energy. Notice from Overseer Council. Given the encroaching darkness of SCP-6500 and the resulting erasure of everything we have spent the last 150 years building, it has come, become clear that almost any action taken and that can prevent the full devastation of the anomalous will be supported by this body. Proposal granted. We will not let magic die. 057. Now. Looks like that's the end. Well, that was the end of the Path of the Cleric. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow we will begin end with the Path of the Thief. So until then, goodbye!